Hey there guys and welcome back to Prototype. In the last episode, Alex sought some medical attention for his super power draining cancer. So we looked up Dr. Ragland. Ragland said that we had to get our hands on the body of patient zero to cure Alex. And Alex went out looking for some army guy who knew where patient zero's body was. So I'm guessing that now we're going to go and get it. Also, in the last mission, I learned that without any of my powers to back me up, I tend to die in this game. A lot. So, I need some upgrades that'll help me survive a bit longer. Maybe any good new moves for unarmed combat? Or... Patsy. I don't know what it is, but it sounds funny, so I guess I'll want to buy it. And what do we have here? That looks like it extends my health bar, so I guess I will buy those. And I don't have enough to buy anything else. Well, I can buy this. Wall jump latch. Don't think I'm ever going to use it, but whatever. Okay, let's go and do the mission. See what Ragland wants us to do now. What's happening to me? They know you carry the infection. They might be using you to produce an antivirus. If we learn what it's doing, maybe I can find a way to help your biology reject it. How? Cut off its food supply. But isn't Alex the food supply? So can't we just cut off the tumor and call it a day? Sounds like a sound plan. If I'm gonna get Raglan to those bodies, I'm gonna need some armor. Okay, so we're not going to get the body, we're just going to get Raglan to the body. So I will eat some soldiers, refill my health. And I'm in the clear. Okay, need to go and find a tank somewhere. Do -de do I'm just an inconspicuous soldier, pay no attention to me whatsoever. Do -de do anyone know where a tank is around here? No one? You there. Okay, what the hell was I doing when I was recording? I'm kind of wandering around. Nope, don't shoot that guy. Okay, let's start running. Mow down some people, because this is not suspicious in the slightest. Any regular army guy can do this and have creepy red and brown stuff come out of his feet when he's running. Okay, tank. I need a tank. There's plenty of soldiers around, but no tank. Thorough sweep, no stone unturned. You're never going to find me. Let's see. Okay, there's a military base not all that far from here. There has to be a tank over there. Oh, okay, didn't see that. Running vault over cars because it's fun. Yeah, there is absolutely nothing suspicious about a... Oh, okay, I guess we don't need the military base after all, because we find a tank right here. And there's no one inside it, apparently. Or maybe there is, and he doesn't think it's strange that there's just some guy hopping into his tank. And... Asking him to let him drive it. Who would leave an empty tank standing in the middle of the city? I mean, sure, maybe they're thinking that ordinary civilians can't operate one of these things. Which I guess would make sense, because... I doubt it's anything like driving a car. Operating a tank must not be easy. I've actually been inside a tank once on the uh, some sort of like an army day in my country you can go to the nearest military base and like have a tour and ride on the inside of a tank and stuff the Penn station bodies are in a base in harlem let's go if you can get me a couple of minutes with those corpses i think i can get what you need ew ragland you sick son of a oh you mean just to examine them thought he was going to do something else entirely with those corpses Something which I'm pretty sure is against the law. You know, 
necrophilia. You know, it's something I've been wondering for quite a while now, and I don't know if it's strange that I'm thinking about that sort of thing, but what do you call someone who has... What do you call a man who has sex with a dead boy? Like, he's... It's like necrophilia, it's pedophilia, and it's being gay. So do you call him, like, what, a, a homo-pedo-necrophiliac or something? Is there, like, a certain order those words are supposed to go in? And why the hell am I thinking about that sort of stuff? I don't know, someone mentioned it to me the other day and I just thought, yeah, you kind of have a point there. But I don't think any of you know the answer to that, or if there's even an answer to it, because it's not really something people go around wondering on a day-to-day -day basis, I hope. Anyway, here's the base. It's pretty empty. Looks kind of broken. Maybe that's why it's empty. Okay, loading. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's an overrun base. That makes sense why it's empty then. What's up, Ragland? You hear anything? What is that? Just ignore it. I'll deal with it. This won't take long. Just give me some time. Okay, I see. We need to protect him for four minutes until he's done doing whatever he's doing to the corpses. And it's a good thing they give you guns. Plenty of guns and no real big... Okay. I guess that was kind of too close for the grenade launcher. Do not fire explosive weaponry at that close of a range. Uh, there's no one in there with you, Ragland. Stop panicking. Where are the enemies at? It's kind of... Oh, crap. Shouldn't have asked where the enemies were. And die. Uh, you only have one shot left. Make it count. Okay, need more guns. Oh, this is a bazooka. That's kind of overdoing it. But I guess anything goes if I'm going to kill these bastards. Take this. Oh, I only hit one. Why aren't they sticking together? Oh, that one went way off target. Okay, then I'll just punch him. A karate kick. Yeah, I guess that works. Would be a lot. Oh, crap. I think that's a big one. Yep. Figures hate fighting those with my bare hands, but I guess it'll have to do. And apparently, that is pretty sturdy glass, because all those guys are bashing on it, and it's not breaking. Then again, we are in a military base, so it's not too strange to think that it's like bulletproof glass. Or Kevlar or something. Although I'm pretty sure Kevlar is not glass. Or see-through. Isn't that the stuff they use to, like, make those, uh, the riot shields? I think? Probably. And I, from what I've learned when I was watching BattleBots when I was a kid, it's pretty popular material for building BattleBots with... Whatever happened to that show? I loved that show. That was, like, the best part of my childhood. Like, getting home after school playing video games, then eating dinner, and then sitting down watching BattleBots. It was freaking awesome. Why don't we have any cool TV shows like that anymore these days? I mean, TV is just going down the drain, in my opinion. If I, for example, if I look at all the awesome cartoons that I grew up with, like Pokemon and Digimon, and Yu-Gi-Oh, and Metabots, and what else did I watch when I was a kid? Um, there was this Transformers-ish show with dinosaur robots, but it wasn't Transformers. That show was pretty freaking awesome as well. Can't for the life of me remember what it's called, though. And if I'm looking at what kids have to watch these days, it's like... Freaking Hannah Montana and Zack and Cody and other live-action crap. 
I mean, since when did live action become the new standard for children's entertainment on television? It's just... Okay, it, it makes a lot of money. Like with the merchandise from Hannah Montana and that wizard show and stuff. But still, there's plenty of merchandise of other stuff like Phineas and Ferb. So why don't we see more cartoons? It's all like live action crap. And I occasionally watch Nickelodeon, I like Spongebob, Spongebob's humor is still great, even for my age group. I think there's a lot of, like, adult references in Spongebob that kids don't really get. That's pretty cool. And if I turn on, like, the TV at night, or, like, after 6 p.m. on Nickelodeon, all I get is, like, this live-action shit, like, iCarly and other shows that I don't know the name of. It's just, I don't like live action TV shows for kids. Maybe it's because I'm not in the age group for that kind of stuff anymore, but I still like plenty of cartoons. I like the, the Star Wars The Clone Wars show, that's pretty cool, and I like Ben 10. And, um... That's kind of about it, I guess. Maybe, maybe I am outgrowing that stuff. It's no longer time for me to embrace my inner child. No, if you're like above 18, I guess you're not allowed to have fun in your life anymore. I mean, really, if I, uh, I'm at college, as most of you probably know, and pretty much the amount of homework that they give you, that they expect you to do, is insane. Like, they don't allow you to have a hobby or a job or anything, and what the hell is that? Run, Ragland, run. Anyway, we're done. It went a little off-topic there, but uh, whatever. Back to Prototype, because that's what you were here to watch, I guess. Even though... I'll admit this myself, it's not my most interesting LP to watch, in my opinion. Because the game's story is really lackluster. Prototype 2 really fixed up the story a lot. The story in Prototype 2 is much better. You actually give a crap about the characters, they actually have a personality, somewhat. Not much of a personality. I mean... The, the main character in Prototype 2 it can basically be described as super-powered, angry black man. But, um... Still better than Alex Mercer in this game. I mean, he's just... Bland. He has the personality of sanding paper. And I died. Yeah, apparently the tank is kind of fragile. But I've learned a valuable lesson from dying there. Do not agitate the army. This is much easier if they don't know that I'm in this tank. If they think it's just some soldier inside, they won't shoot at it, and that'll make it a lot easier for me. So, just... Ah, uh, crap, there's a... Oh, it's a tentacle monster thing. But yeah, apparently shit's really hitting the fan with the virus if it's sprouting those things. I mean, apparently the... Creepy gorilla looking things weren't enough anymore, so they give me those. Luckily, they're not mobile, so if you just get away from them, they can't do crap. Well, I guess they can still throw stuff at you, which is kind of one of the few things they do, but that's still pretty easily avoided. Although, not so much if you're in a helicopter necessarily. Because uh, by the time they throw something at you, it'll generally be going pretty fast already. And the helicopters in this game don't dodge all that fast. But more about that when we actually have missions in which we can fly helicopters and face those things and stuff. They'll be there eventually. So yeah, mission successful I guess. Now let's go run over some civilians. Because there hasn't been enough bloodshed in this episode yet. Alright, out of the way, thank you. Gotta love how, like, every vehicle I run into with the tank immediately explodes. 
pretty sure it doesn't work like that in real life. Anyway, we're back. That was interesting. I'll get this under a scope. Come back in a few hours. I'll have an analysis for A few hours? What am I gonna do in that amount of time? It's not like Alex has a home anymore that got blown up. Can't do anything. It's not like you can go out to a restaurant with the city being in chaos and everything. Uh, well, the mission's right there. So, uh, I guess, screw a few hours. We want results now, Ragland. And you'd better have them. See, so you can just do the mission right now. Bye-bye.